Good afternoon and welcome to yet another installment of Gaming in Holland's ongoing webinar series. Today's topic is necessary services, how and where to get them. As you all know, the Dutch Remote Gaming Act will enter into force on April 1st, less than one month away. The regulated online market opened six months later on October 1st. This means that if you want to enter this market in six months time, you will need to find suppliers and find them quickly. In order to help you to do so, we've invited seven suppliers of essential services to showcase their products during this webinar. We hope this will be helpful if you're looking for a specific product or just curious to see what is currently on offer. But before we kick off today's webinar, I would like to thank our strategic partners and sponsors. Without their invaluable support, we will not be able to do this. Thank you very much. As always, and this is quite important, our webinars are interactive. If you would like our speakers to answer one or more of your questions, please submit them through the Slido app. Get the app on your mobile or in your browser on your PC and participate in the polls and in the Q&A that we offer you during the webinar. If you ask a question to one of the speakers, please include the name of the speaker in the question. Again, point your camera to the Q&R code and it will all show you how to do that. But before we turn to our suppliers, we have with us today, Kester Meekenkamp, attorney at law at Kalf, Katz & Fransen, who will provide us with a quick legal update. Kester, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Willem. Kester, over to you with um, the legal update well, from uh, Kalf, Katz & Fransen. Yes, thanks. Um, well, as you all know, the central focus point of the Dutch license regime is obviously the B2C operator. Um, it will have to obtain the license. There are no B2B licenses. However, that does obviously not mean that there aren't rules to be complied with by suppliers. Um, and in light of the services discussed today, we will uh, discuss a couple important ones. For example, regarding suppliers of games uh, and platform providers, uh, they in general will have to comply with all the rules and regulations laid down in the PGA, the AML Act, and the Sanctions Act. The licensed applicant will have to, upon its application, um, uh, provide a statement to the NGA that it has asserted that this is the case. Also, um, for example, in relation to platform providers, an important topic is the location of the electronic means, the electronic means used to offer the remote games a chance. Um, following the remote gambling decree, these have to be located within the EU or an EE member state. However, very recently, the NGS indicated um, that it can understand that for it will not always be possible for every bit of the electronic means to be located within the EU. And thus, it will not automatically reject an application if not all parts of the uh, electronic means are located within the EU or EEA. Different story for the control database. That has always have to be located physically within the Netherlands. Um, both the NGA and the tax authorities must have access to the control database, and this amounts to electronic immediate access, but also physical access. So make sure license holders cannot place their CDP within a location where the officials of the NGA and the tax authorities um, cannot immediately physically access that control database. Okay, and then for the uh, last part on identification, verification, lots of uh, specific rules laid down in both the PGA as well as the AML Act, make sure to take a good look at both of those uh, sets of rules. In essence, um, identity has to be uh, verified before the player can access the games of chance. Um, and this has to be done in a, with a method that is sufficiently reliable uh, and can unambiguously determine the player's identity. And the last note is that the NGA has very recently in its AML guideline also offered a, an alternative route for verification of identity using the player's BSN number and um, the verification of the contract account. And I specifically refer to pages 14 to 16 of the AML guideline of the NGA. Make sure to 
closely read those pages. Thank you, Willem. Thank you very much. Uh, really useful, Kester. Quite interesting. I thank you for joining this webinar today. We go to our first supplier of today. Um, and the person speaking there is Joel Altizer, who is Senior Account Manager at Data Center Services Provider Interaction. Joel, how are you? Hi, William. Thank you for asking. It's very good. Sun is shining here in Amsterdam. Please, please keep it that way. Uh, Joel, before we hear from you, let's do a quick audience uh, poll, a survey. Everybody at home, please go to your Slido screen. Visit slido.com, enter the event code GIH. And what we would like to know from you is the following. Have you already contracted a data center provider? We give uh, it a good 20 seconds to look at the results here. Getting some results in. Uh, no seems to be the most. Oops, there's some people who already did that were probably busy doing it at the moment. And we just have an idea here. So, and we see that the majority of the attendees have not done that. I think that is some really helpful background information. Joel, over to you now. Joel, how can a data center provider such as Interaction support iGaming operators in being successful in the Dutch market? Thanks for asking, Willem. Good day, everyone. Uh, we have learned from our experience in working with iGaming operators that compliance and connectivity are typically the two main challenges when entering a new market, including the Netherlands. Firstly, as for compliance, when entering the Dutch market, having a controlled database in place in a secure location in the Netherlands is a key regularity requirement that needs to be met and demonstrated in your license application. Our data centers in the Amsterdam area provide a highly secure environment to place your data fault and manage the access procedures required by the authorities. Also, our campuses with multiple data center facilities enable you to easily meet the physical backup requirements for the CDB. Secondly, we see that an optimal user experience is crucial for operators in gaining and retaining market share. And a key contributor to a great user experience is a network design that allows you to reach your users in any location. Our data centers are not just a secure home for your IT infrastructure, but are also network hubs with presence of many local and international network providers, as well as the major cloud providers such as AWS, Google, and Microsoft. Without global presence, we make it possible for iGaming operators to establish the connection they need in order to guarantee a seamless online experience for their users. Whether that's connectivity between your main platform in one location and your users in regulated markets, or a private connection to the public cloud that allows for scalability, for example, in betting during sports events. The presence of important providers and partners within our data centers can give you peace of mind when expanding your online businesses. In a nutshell, our iGaming customers have chosen us because they understand the importance of location and a solid foundation for their IT needs when entering new markets. So make sure that you have the peace of mind that you need tomorrow by establishing a future-proof foundation today. Fantastic, uh, Joel. That is really, really useful. Yeah, so can you tell me a bit more about the interaction, um, um, about, uh, about your company? Yes, of course, Willem. Uh, interaction is a digital realty company and is an international market leader with 280 data centers worldwide on all continents. I won't bore you with a lot of information about, in information about my organization. Rather, I prefer to share why BWIN chose interaction. And I quote, after an in-depth market analysis, it, it quickly became clear that Interaction was still best in class. They, they offered the best selection of national and international carriers, the best technical specification, the best references, and excellent know-how. If you want to know more about why BWIN chose us, scan the QR code to download the full customer case. The time to act is now, as the first round of application closed in April. Next slide, please. So contact us to discuss how we can assist to set up the foundation you need to meet KSA's requirements. Thank you for your time. Let's connect.
Let's connect indeed. So a lot of information there, uh, including the connection link to you, Joel, and your colleague. Um, but let's have a look at the audience questions. Let's go to Slido. Everybody at home, go to Slido. Please add your question to Joel. There's probably some other questions there. I see we have time to answer one question. Joel, can you offer guarantees regarding uptime, latency, etc.? We can guarantee five nines as layer regarding uptime. Uh, we are T3 plus a data center uh, and latency. Uh, um, we team up with uh, with a lot of our carriers uh, and network providers, so you can always have uh, um, redundant lines. Excellent. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining us today, uh, Joel. Next, thank we have with us Andy Rogers. Thank you, Joel. Next, we have with us Andy Rogers, chairman of the board at Pretty Technical. Andy, how are you? I'm very well, Willem. How are you? Very well. Welcome to the webinar. Andy, before we hear from you, let's do a quick audience survey. As I said before, please go to the, your Slido screen. If you have not done so, please go to slido.com and enter the G, event code GIH. What we would like to know from you is, have you implemented a data vault yet? And we have some people voting from home. So please take a moment to go to the Slido app or to the slido.com website, enter the event code GIH and participate in this vault. I think we'll give it a few more seconds, but it's quite clear the majority of the attendees today have not implemented uh, a data vault. That's some helpful background information here. Andy, what is Domino and why have a data vault? Well, uh, Domino is our brand name for our data vault, um, and the data vault is a, a sort of generic term uh, for what's called the control database in the Netherlands. And it's it's a um, it's a, a piece of software that is a regulatory requirement. Um, you have to have it to operate legally in in the jurisdictions that require it, and there are a number around the world. Um, and what it does, quite simply, is it um, it takes information from your PAM. Uh, on play data and, and other things uh, that are re related to your, your regulatory performance. It converts that into a format that the regulator specifies. It keeps that data um, in a persistent way and it allows the regulator to access that in a, in a predefined way. Um, and, you know, around the world, uh, in all of those markets that require it, um, the, the requirements of that data vault are slightly different. So whether it's timing or the type of data or the, the time it's held or the format the regulator would like it in is all, is all slightly different. Um, so that's, that's as a product and, and that's what we call Domino. Quite clear, uh, Andy. Andy, how do you differentiate yourself in the, in the market? Well, that's, that's a really good question. So the product itself is, is pre-described. You know, it has to do what it does. <laughs> um, you, you can't make up anything around it particularly. But um, what we've had the ability to do is, is take some of our experience. So uh, myself and the co-founder of Pretty Technical, Andre, we, we ran about 27% of the, the Spanish GGR through platforms that we ran a few years ago. Um, so we're very used to dealing with regulators and that was a requirement in Spain as well. Um, we've actually developed these data vaults before. Um, and, uh, and so we have good experience on the technology side. Um, obviously, the service level is very important here. You need to trust the people you're dealing with um, and they need to be responsive, both in a commercial sense, but also in a, in a, a service sense. Uh, and we're really good at that, uh, at pretty technical. Um, the second way would be the technology. And as I say, the, the feature set is prescribed, but the way that you deploy it is not. Um, and so, you know, we have a very modern technology stack. It's all JSON and, and RESTful APIs. So very easy to integrate with. Um, and then the first, uh, sorry, the final thing there is the commercial model. So the commercial model is quite interesting. Um, it's either based on average daily um, player activity over the month, um, or we will um, sell the code so that a, a customer can run this themselves under their own stack, as long as they've got the, the right um infrastructure requirements um as we just heard previously oh, quite interesting andy andy as a last question to you who is behind domino the company and what else do you offer yeah so domino is brought to you by um pretty technical and pretty technical is part of the the rocker network 
um, which is a group of wholly owned businesses all pointed at the gaming um, sector. You may have heard of some of those, Rocker and Random Color Animal and Skull Mountain and etc. But Pretty Technical itself offers um, curated gaming solutions. So we have a set of core gaming technology. Um, it's, it's not you know, like a turnkey or a white label solution like some other providers on the market. We have player account management, we have uh, RNG as a service, we have data tools, um, we have uh, crypto payment gateways, and so core technology for the gaming industry. And so things like the data vault, like Domino, are, are very, um, they're very front and center for the type of things that we're bringing to market as pretty technical. Um, our experience, as I say, is, is uh, multi-year. Um, we have myself and, uh, and my business partner, Andre, um, have many, many years experience in both serving the B2B community uh, in the gaming sector, but also a whole wide range of international tier one operators. Um, so we're used to that service level and, and the requirements that those people have in the market. I guess, Andy, pretty technical is what it describes quite uh, well. Thank you very much, uh, it's, Andy. It's pretty technical. Um, let's see if there's any audience uh, questions. We have time to answer one question here to Andy. And we have a question from the audience here. Andy, how is the process to deliver the CD solution, I guess the control database solution, as an independent product? Yep. So um, one of the, the, the only real complexity is us working with an internal um, technical team to understand the data structure um, of the existing uh, PAM, the, the player account management system. We need to understand that in order to um, deploy our ingester. So we have something called an ingester, which takes the data out of a system and puts it into, our, into Domino. Um, so that's really the main process that we need to understand. Once it's in that and we've, we've, we've tested that and we're, we're, we're confident as a, as a team that it's compliant, um, then it's, it can be put live in, in a very short timeline. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Super clear. That's all the time we have for you, Andy. Andy, thank you for being with us today. And I hope to see you in person um, uh, soon. Thank you. Our, our next presenter today is Martijn de Boer, founder of customer data verification company CDDN. Martijn, how are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. How are you? That's good. Yeah, all fine. Thank you. I'm glad to have you. Martijn, before we hear from you, Let's do a quick audience uh, poll, as we did with your uh, with the other speakers. As before, please at home, go to the Slido screen. If you haven't done so, please visit slido.com and enter the event code GIH. We have the poll here. Do you think the Dutch customer ID verification regulations are sufficiently clear to properly implement a customer onboarding solution? So sufficient, clear, verification regulations we have some answers coming in here it's going back and forth the answer is no or yes let's give it a few more seconds and i think we see the majority here that says no too many crucial elements haven't been clarified yet and hopefully we can get a bit closer to this clarification here with martijn today so let's let me ask you the first question then martijn how is cddn able to deal with the remaining uncertainties in the kyc regulations uh, well, hi everybody. Uh, well, due to the remaining uh, uncertainties, uh, uncertainties, we provide a flexible uh, clearinghouse, which is called Verify Me. Uh, we leave it up to the operator where to implement uh, the mandatory checks, uh, whether it be registration or the login. Uh, but uh, these services can be switched on and off with the flick of a switch. So uh, you can apply for a license up to and uh, get uh, get a solution up to one day before you apply applic uh, for a license. Very good. Um, speaking about the KYC checks, which specific KYC checks do you offer? Well, the mandatory checks we currently provide are uh, 18 plus with IDIN. Uh, that's the IBAN name check, which is a mandatory thing. Uh, that's the PEP sanction listings, ID document scannings uh, with RFID and uh, OCR scans. Uh, of course, uh, the control database in order to uh, verify uh, players after registration. So if you store players data, you need to make sure that you also check on a regular basis with, uh, for example, PEP uh, sanction listings. And uh, last but not least, the mandatory self-test, which is another phase, uh, phase one uh, thing that will be applicable after the license application. But we do also provide this uh, mandatory self-test. Furthermore, we provide additional services like debt check, uh, insolvent checks, ideal payments, FISA, MasterCard, 
So uh, we service, uh, we currently service many operators uh, finding the right solution uh, with us during uh, in this clearinghouse. Great, uh, quite a number of uh, checks you can deliver there. How, and how fast can you have your solution up and running, uh, Martijn? Well, because we have a highly specialized support team uh, doing this uh, uh, day in, day out, uh, there's only one clearinghouse, one API. So we should get you connected within one day and up to two weeks, including testing and uh, interpretation of the results. But uh, no more than, uh, than one or two weeks uh, if you have a total focus on implementing these servers uh, from the IT department. Okay, so efficient, efficient turnaround here. That's really interesting. So let's see what the audience uh, thinks here today. Here, um, let's look at the audience questions in Slido. As before, go to slido.com, enter the event code GIH, and let's look at one question to Martijn here. Uh, so there was the poll. That's quite good. Can we go to the first question, please, of Martijn? Great. The question here is, will IDEN be sufficient to use as the identification and verification of the player? Also given the obligation to collect the nature, number and place of issue. Quick answer to that, uh, Martijn. It's, um... Well, it's, it's not sufficient alone, IDEN. So you need to do an ID document scan with uh, RFID and, uh, and or OCR scan. So IDIN 18 plus yeah. is uh, sufficient, but IDIN NRA is, uh, is uh, not sufficient. Okay, thank you, Martijn. Whoever asked the questions, uh, please don't forget tomorrow in the post, uh, in the Gaming Knowledge newsletter, we'll include the contact details of all the speakers, including Martijn, if you have any more in-depth questions about the issues raised. Okay. Martijn, thank you for joining us today. Next speaker, we have Martin Brandner, Chairman of the Board at Platform Provider Finplay. Martin, how are you? Hello, William. I'm good. Thanks. Good to be on the program. And welcome, uh, welcome again. It's the second time we do this. Uh, we're getting good at it. Martin, before we hear from you, let's do a quick audience survey. Let's all go to slider.com. Use the event code GIH. And let's look at the question we've prepared for this specific part. What matters most when choosing a platform provider? And there's four possibilities here. Compliance with local regulations, time to market as number two, content or the cost. See, the cost is not important, uh, Martin. I think that's good news. But let's see how the final yeah. results uh, play out here. I, I, think, I think compliance with local regulations is the majority of the votes here which gives a good backdrop to the to the stuff we're discussing here martin martin what steps have you taken to ensure that your platform is compliant with dutch regulations well uh, <clears throat> we are quite uh, quite experienced in dealing with uh, <clears throat> with regulators our platform is compliant in uh, in more than 10 uh, 10 different jurisdictions uh, one of them uh, being denmark and the Dutch or the, the, the Danish regulation is very, very similar to the to the Dutch regulation. Um, yeah. We have been working already since uh, since uh, since last November with uh, with th three customers on making all the necessary changes to the platform in order to to be compliant with the new Dutch regulation. Um, the biggest development work what we are doing is the development of our own uh, uh, control database. Uh, which forms an integrated part of the total solution. Um, we have also teamed up with, uh, with a test laboratory in Holland, um, and together we will be certifying our platform during May. Uh, so we feel that we are very well prepared for the new, new Dutch, Dutch regulation. Excellent, excellent. So time is everything uh, we've uh, noticed in the last few weeks. Martin, how easy is it to integrate ID verification tools and payment services in your platform? Do you have experience with integrating local tools and services as well? Yes, yes, we have uh, we have uh, integrated already various uh, various tools. For example, we already have integrated IDEAN for the for the Dutch market. We have also integrated IDEAL, the local uh, local payment method. 
Um, the, the, the straightforward integration of such, uh, such tools and services is, is not very, very, very complex. It takes maybe, maybe two to four weeks per integration max. I think the more challenging part is actually to design the player journey, um, which, uh, which, uh, as we have heard, is, is not so clear yet because uh, uh, some, some questions are still answer, unanswered in the regulation. And I think this is where, where operators will also try to gain competitive advantage over, over their peers by, by designing a very, very smooth um, verification process for the players. Yeah, excellent. Uh, Martin, with your FinPlay platform, what is your time to market and how fast can a new customer go live? Uh, yeah, our our product is of course uh, uh, much more customized and tailored for the specific operator. Uh, typically, it takes three to four months to actually go through a whole customization project from A until the product is ready for 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 the market. Uh, for Holland, our plan is that during May. Uh, we, we shall have all the functionalities developed for the Dutch market and also have the platform certified together with the auditor. And after that, I think it will take max three to four months to bring on a new, a new, new customer, basically. Yeah, okay, so May and then in time for the October launch. Uh, very good. Yes. Really, really helpful uh, to know this all. Uh, Martin, let's see if there's any audience questions. Again, if you ask the questions, please include the person you want to address the question to. And we have a question here from the audience. There's only time for one uh, question here. Martin, do you offer unique content? Uh, well, we ourselves, we are focusing on the platform. So we are not providing any, any, any games. Uh, there we rely on, um, on, um, on third party integrations. We have integrated various uh, game providers but we ourselves don't provide any content. Exactly, but you facilitate that. And for those operators who would like to have that, you, yes. you, will, you will integrate those. Martin, thank you for joining us today. That was super, super helpful and hope to see you again uh, soon. Thank you very much. You're welcome. What is today next is Hank Wolf, Chief Marketing Officer as Platform Provider, Dutch Gambling Association. Hank, how are you? I'm good, Willem. Thanks for asking, how are you? Thank you and thank you for joining us today. But Hank, uh, before we hear from you, let's do the same and do a quick audience survey with all the attendees of this uh, webinar. And that uh, can be answered in the Slido app, or in your browser, slido.com, or in your app uh, using the event code GIH. Should a platform provider, this is the poll here for, for Hank, be able to supply local content? Key requisite. It's nice to have an essential. You're still seeing some answers getting in. I guess the majority here says, oops. Well, majority says here it's key, key requisite. That's interesting to know in the background for our discussion here today. Hank, apart from being a platform provider, what else do you have to offer to your customers? Right, so what we do is when we go in a conversation with an possible operator, we help them with to uh, with the license. We help them to obtain a license. Uh, we help with, with everything that we can on the legal aspect of that. Once they have received their license, we will help them with their branding and all that stuff to get their website up and running. Uh, we increase the funnels for retention we, and acquisition funnels um, optimized. Um, and apart from our platform, I think we offer very fair prices. We do not gain commission on any deals between the operator and the game provider. Um, I think that's very important. We work very transparent. Um, and what you see with a lot of uh, operators is that they ask commissions on part on, uh, on top of the game com uh, provider's commission. And apart from fair prices and the services that we deliver, I think we have a great, talented and very ambitious team. I mean, I work with P Peter Spelier. He's built over 20 offline casinos in the Dutch market. Um, he's a very known, well-known name in the Dutch market. 
and even online, Mark team and I, we've been breaking records on the left and right, and we still outperform the branch average with at least 30% with our brands. So I think that's what we can offer. Advice, fair prices, and um, yeah, support during the application for the license. Fantastic, Hank. Very hands-on uh, offering here. And Hank, do you offer products or services that are specifically tailored to the Dutch consumer market? Oh, yes, definitely. Well, um, uh, thank you for asking. And I really like the audience question there as well. So apart from all the marketing that we have integrated and that we can offer within our platform, we want to end that are truly com fully compliant to the Dutch regulations. Um, we ha do offer specially tailored um, content. We have this amazing um, fellow co-founder, uh, Stake Logic, and their games can be found in offline casinos right now. If you go to a random pub in Amsterdam or Rotterdam or Eindhoven or Groningen, you will find their play uh, games being played. So the Dutch players will recognize these games online and they will choose to go to our operators' websites uh, because they have this recognition within them. Um, so it will increase the player acquisition and it will highly increase the player's database as well. Uh, so yeah, we do offer unique content for specialized for the Dutch market. Okay, unique content. That's quite clear. We'll hear from Mistake Logic uh, in a little while. And, 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 and Hank, what do you expect from your customers? And what can your customers expect from you? Right, so we do not expect our operators uh, to leave it all in all our hands. We want them to cooperate with us. We want them to do the marketing. Uh, we can help them. We can set up certain uh, templates, but we do want them to build their own brand. We do want them to build their own business. And what can customers expect from us? I definitely say flexibility, time to market. Um, if we look at flexibility, there are a lot of platform providers out there that um, if you ask for a change, it can take up weeks, up to months before it's being changed. Whereas we, because we spe specialize on the Dutch market, we can change things within hours or even minutes, uh, if, depending on how big it is. So um, customers can expect that from us. And um, so our ideal operator would be someone that loves to do business um, and sees this opportunity and is like, yeah, I want in, Hank, I want in. Exactly, Hank. Very flexible, uh, it seems. Really good here. So let's see if there's any audience questions. Again, uh, if you have any questions, please answer them. Uh, please ask them in the Q&A tool, in the slider tool. Please add the uh, name of the person you are asking the question to. And we have a question here. What's your biggest challenge, uh, Hank, getting your platform ready for the Dutch uh, launch? So, um... Our entire board, including me, we are all Dutch. So we knew that the Dutch market would eventually open up. So our platform um, was already being prepared every time we heard something new from the Dutch regulator. Um, so we constantly updated our platform and we will continuously update our platform to be always subpar to the uh, regulations. We will always do our best uh, to oblige to every rule that the CASA will ever uh, put upon us. Perfect. So up to date is the key here. Hank, that was really helpful. Thank you for joining us today Thank and I hope to see you in person soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker. Exactly. Our next speaker is Stefan van den Oetelaar, CEO of Game Developer Stake Logic. Stefan, how are you? I'm doing very well. I'm looking over a very sunny Kiev at the moment. Sunny is good. Sunny is good. Stefan, thank you for being here. And once again, uh, before we go to your part, let's do a quick audience survey question. That's on Slido. As before, go in your browser, use the event code GIH or use the app and access the poll. And the poll question is here. Have you already considered adding localized content to your product portfolio? Localized content to your product portfolio. Entering the poll here. It's a quick yes or no answer. Give it a few more seconds, uh, but I think we see where it's going. And I think the majority of the companies, of the sorry participants to the webinar, have definitely considered localized content. I think that's a good backdrop to the conversation we are about to have now. Stefan, what do Dutch players typically expect from online slot games? 
Well, Dutch players um, will look for Dutch classic slot games because that's the games they know from the pubs and the arcades. And also analysts expect that uh, classic slot games will make about 20 to 25 percent of the total Dutch online market and that includes a live casino. And um, yes, we, we anticipated on that when, uh, when we bought Stake Logic. Uh, Stake Logic holds a lot of uh, typical Dutch IPR. So over the last years, we've created many, many classic slot games, which we can now offer to operators to, uh, to exploit on the Dutch market. So we're very excited about the Dutch market opening up. How many games, is Stefan, if I may ask? Uh, we, have, we have more than 60 uh, classic games live at the moment. That's quite impressive. I was trying to count all the titles, that's why. Stefan, what are the strengths <laughs> of your product portfolio? Um, the strengths of our of our portfolio. I think I think in all modesty we can say that Stake Logic is the world market leader where it comes to classic slot games. Um, We've created many, many successful titles uh, over the last five years, games that reside on top positions with uh, tier one operators around the world. I think one of our strengths is that we combine uh, traditional game concepts with the possibilities of the, of the online world. So we, we create classic games and we add new elements to the game concept. And th this makes that, that players are more open to explore games that are actually new and different. So by, by, by doing so, we, we extend the life cycle of games concepts that have been very successful for the last uh, 30 years. Yeah, okay. Very good. <laughs> Stefan, could you also provide an example how your games can be tailored to meet specific customer demands? Okay, well, well, first about tailoring a game, I think uh, Stake Logic, it's, it's an end to end software factory. So that means that Stake Logic controls all the elements of the game. So we control the graphics, the animations, the sounds, the game server, the user interface, we create everything ourselves. And that means that our art directors, they can specify a game to the last detail. And also the, the art directors stay involved in the complete development process of the game. And we keep uh, tweaking and, and tuning our games till, till it really meets the specifications. And you can only do that when, when you have everybody under the same roof. When it comes to meeting um, customer demands, um, well, I, I don't want to take the romance and the, and, the, and the magic out of our profession, but to a large extent, Stake Logic games are nowadays based on, on data analysis. We study the, the data in our back office. We study the data we buy from uh, external sources. And we analyze why certain games are successful in specific markets. And that data we use to develop new game concepts. And this is the way that Stake Logic maximizes the chances that our, our games are successful. And I think it's this analytical approach towards game development that, that has brought us where we are today. That's excellent. That's quite impressive, Stefan. So let's see if there's any audience questions uh, to you. Again, go to the Slido app, use the event code GIH and answer your questions. And there's a question here for you, Stefan. Are there specific new features that you are developing at this moment? At this moment, we are developing an in-house uh, leaderboard to create more of a, um, a community element uh, within our games. Uh, we're also coming up with a line of um, uh, live roulette games, which, uh, which we will combine with, with classic slot games that you can actually play live roulette and your favorite classic slot game at the same time. So these, these for us are two um, uh, major developments we're working on uh, right now. Quite impressive. Stefan, that was really quite interesting. Thank you for joining us today. And, and, and again, see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our final speaker of today is Robert Stivill, Director of Business Development at Platform Provider Camansa. Robert, how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm very well, Willem. And hello to all the listeners as well. Perfect. Robert, thank you for being here. To go with our final speaker today, we have a final audience survey question. And let's have a look at that here at Slido, a poll that you can all participate in in Slido, either on slido.com or in the Slido app on your mobile. And that question is, what do you feel will be most important for your brand 
or business long term. That's personalized user experience, everything in equal measure, sorry, marketing promotion, proactive responsible gaming measures, or all of these uh, options in equal measure. We give it a few more seconds to look at the results here. But I think the personalized user experience is definitely the uh, winner here. I think that gives a good backdrop to the stuff we're going to speak about here, uh, Robert. Robert, could you could you please tell us something about the unique strengths of the Gamanza platform? Yeah, of course. Um, so I mean, I'd quickly mention general IT management uh, and infrastructure because we've done a lot of work recently to obtain our ISO 27001 certification. So there's that. But in terms of product, I'd pick out two things about Gamanza from different angles. Firstly, for compliance, we have a really sophisticated risk service that allows operators to configure alerts and automate actions for managing their fraud, anti-money laundering and responsible gaming policies. And then from a marketing perspective, the most impressive strength of our platform is our real-time CRM. Uh, it's been purpose-built for iGaming. Um, and so because of the, the combination with the platform, it means that operators will get a, a really powerful all-in-one solution. Very good. Very good. And Robert, can you provide some examples of the extra value added by this CRM product? Sure. Well, the, the combination with the platform, of course, means uh, of course means it's cost effective. Um, but it's also a deep integration with the other platform services that add a lot of value. So, for example, bonuses can be linked to email and SMS campaigns, uh, or certain players can be excluded from communications if they've been flagged by the risk service, for example, uh, and lots of other things as well. Um, also, it means that the segmentation tool can utilize a much wider range of parameters. Uh, so operators can create really targeted campaigns and avoid bombarding players with lots of irrelevant offers. Um, and then within the personalization, personalization engine that's uh, part of the CRM, you can track individual players' interactions with each campaign and get a visual insight into their gaming preferences which of course can be further used to, to create personalized offers and, and user experience. Okay, well, that's quite interesting, Robert. Robert, uh, another question here, what tools are available in your platform to promote responsible gaming? Yeah, we have a number of tools. Um, we've always seen responsible gaming as been uh, something that should be at the forefront of, uh, of a platform provision. So the main tool on our side is, is this risk service that I've mentioned. It's uh, constantly reading all of the data and the events that come through the platform. So for example, I've talked about the alerts. They can be triggered from transactions like a use of multiple payment methods or cancelled withdrawals. Um, or they can track changes in gaming activity across a certain time period to see changes in behavior uh, and things like this. And um, so the alerts are sent to support staff uh, so that they can investigate cases and decide on what steps to take. Uh, and then all of the alerts and subsequent actions that are taken are recorded and shared to a control database, of course, which is, is part of the obligation of the, the licensee to report those. Uh, we also support what we call call off periods from the different product verticals or game categories individually. So not from all games, but certain, certain parts of the offering. Um, and then of course, there's the limits for deposits, wages, um, losses, and, and playtime, accumulated playtime. So in general, we can provide a turnkey solution for Dutch regulation, um, as well as also some other services I've been unable to mention. Um, we offer customizable gamification software. Um, our own in-house studio produces exclusive game content as well. Um, and so listeners can obviously find more information on our website. Uh, full service uh, there. And since you mentioned your website uh, to all the attendees today, um, all the contact details of all the speakers today will be included in tomorrow's Gaming in Holland uh, newsletter. Robert, uh, there was an extensive answer and it sounds very uh, complete uh, package. Uh, before we wrap this up, uh, let's go to an audience question. There is time for one question. Let's go to Slido, see if there's a question for Robert here. 
Uh, Robert, do you offer solutions for bringing length-based and online CRM together? Uh, yeah, that, great question. In fact, it allows me to um, dip into the fact that we've we've come, in fact, from the Swiss regulated market. Um, we were the first legal, um, well, the first provider to launch the, an online casino of our partner, Grand Casino Baden. Um, and so there's a big effort internally to ensure that we offer as much um, unification between the land-based operation and the online operation. Um, so yes, uh, there's lots of things that we're doing to create um, cross-registration, um, hybrid loyalty programs between land-based operation and, and online operation. Um, so there's many uh, things that we can do to, to ensure that that combination is maximized. Okay, so it's sort of in your DNA, I guess. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for clarifying that. And thank you for joining us today. Um, with this, we have come to the end of yet another Gaming Hunt webinar, and I hope you found it uh, somehow uh, useful. If you'd like to contact one of these suppliers, we will have a link to their contact details in tomorrow's Gaming in Holland newsletter. As always, let's keep in touch. If you have not signed up for the free newsletters and print magazines, do so at either gaminghon.com or at www.gamingin.eu. That's www.gamingin.eu. Don't forget next week, we have another webinar coming up and that's the final one before the Dutch Remote Gaming Act enters into force. On Wednesday, March 10th, exactly in uh, one week at 3 p.m., we will be discussing responsible gaming for licensed operators, obligations, implementation, and technical solutions. This webinar will feature contributions from Sharif Ibrahim of law firm Kalfkas in France, leading responsible gaming expert Peter Hemmers, and Peter Emil Tibirk, representing responsible gaming solutions provider Mindway AI. More information on this webinar, as well as the registration link, will be in tomorrow's Gaming Holland newsletter that you as attendees of this webinar will also all receive. For now, I wish you all goodbye. Until next time, and have a fantastic day.